right. So today I'm not going to get too much into the technicalities of certain things. Uh, I want to make sure to give a high kind of overview of the process, but later on in the recordings within uh, your student library, you're going to be able to see some of the more detailed recordings on how to set this stuff up. But I wanted to be able to go over this today to explain to you the process to where that way you see the benefits of this, how easy it is for you to be able to set up uh, and go out and start being able to provide local refinishing services in your community. And again, being able to have a consistent method uh, for being able to do this. So a good quote is being never wondering where your next client is going to come from. So that's one of the great benefits of this client on demand process, along with being able to have a consistent method for generating new leads. So I don't know what everyone's currently doing. Maybe you have an active process for how you're getting uh, jobs locally. Maybe you're not doing it yet just because you haven't had a consistent method, or maybe you've had people come up to you and ask if you do services or different things like that in the past, but this is going to, again, be able to give you a method to where you can basically flip a switch and have people coming requesting services that you can go and offer locally in your community. Another great benefit of this is that it's going to help you build a list of potential companies customers looking for your service. So not only are these going to be leads of people saying, hey, I want you to come refinish my cabinets or, hey, I want you to come uh, repaint a dresser that I have. This is going to give people that are actively looking for furniture and services that you can add to your email list to where you can update them uh, when you're just finished a piece or about a new piece of content that you came out with. So again, this is another great way of being able to do that as well. Another thing, just like with any business, is to know how much your customer acquisition cost is. So as we go into this process, you're going to be able to see that this really gives you one clear way of being able to know, okay, I can spend a dollar here and get $3 out here. Or I know when I'm putting this much money in, this is how much it's cost me to get a customer. So again, going back to maybe you've had kind of an inconsistent way in the past, past or maybe everything's been referral and word of mouth at this point. Uh, from past clients and things like that, this is going to allow you to give have a measurable result inside of your business to where you know how much it costs to be able to acquire that customer. And again, just being able to have a turnkey system. So that way it's like, well, how are you acquiring your customers? Well, I'm using advertising. I've got this certain method that I use, again, that you can turn on and off depending when you want to take on more clients. Maybe one week you've got pieces that you're working on where you don't want to have uh, more work coming in. That's something that you can turn off and it's completely up to you. Another great thing is being able to actually delegate this to other members of your team. So delegate, delegation is a great part of scale. So if you plan on taking more work, this is something that you can actually train someone else to do or share this presentation and have them to go through this workshop. And they'll be able to learn how to actually set this up and do it for you to where you'll have leads coming in and all you have to worry about is following up with them, going out and giving a quote, and you don't have to worry about the technical side. But the hope for this evening is that I really make this as simple as possible. Uh, and then of course, answering any questions at the end and some of the videos that we'll have supporting this in your student library, that'll show you how to actually set it up. And again, I wanted to try to make it uh, as straightforward as possible. So the client on demand uh, kind of process in a nutshell here. I like being able to lay this out in a framework to where it makes it easy to understand uh, as far as in these presentations. But step one is just going to be planning, right? Just like in uh, a job that you're doing, a majority of the work is going to be in that preparation stage. So we're going to go over what that planning process looks like in preparing to move to stage two, which is actually the advertising. Now, the method of advertising that we're going to be using is Facebook and Instagram ads. So Facebook owns Instagram. It gives us the ability to use these two separate platforms to advertise in our local community and have a crazy amount of reach. So it, it allows us to go very broad. But the way that advertisers on, uh, excuse me, Facebook have it set up is that it'll learn for you. So it'll know who to put your advertisements in front of based on your copy, based on your profile and different things like that. And it will basically, uh, what's the word for it? The algorithm will find out for you who the best people are to show those ads in front of. So we'll be able to go into this and actually look at what it looks like to set up that advertisement. 
The next step is getting the leads. So once we've actually set the ads up, we've sent them out. The way that Facebook has this certain ad set up is that once you turn it on, the leads start coming in. So you can download them from Facebook or you can have them go directly into a spreadsheet that you can use to be able to pull from. It's very, very simple. And we'll get into what that looks like. After you get the leads, then it's giving the quotes. So it's making sure to call those leads, give them a phone call, and to actually go out in person to provide them a quote or an estimate of what it's going to look like to have that service done, whether it's for their cabinets or their furniture. And that's really what these are going to specifically focus on for these types of advertisements is going to be somebody who's wanting to you know, just put a new coat of paint on their furniture. Maybe they're wanting to re, you know, redo their cabinets. Some of these jobs might be really simple, just like a fresh coat of paint. I would say probably 20% of your jobs might lie more on the actual specialty finish side, but that you will have those jobs as well. And then of course, number five, land the jobs. So that is the client on-demand process in a nutshell. Uh, and we're going to actually go into each one of these, break it down, and actually go over what that looks like, starting with number one, which is the planning process. So kind of an overview in a nutshell, we'll go into each of these as well for the planning process. But step number one is that we want to prepare our pages for traffic. The next thing is going to be setting up our advertising accounts to make sure uh, that we're ready to actually begin putting out these advertisements and make sure that we have the appropriate things set up on Facebook and Instagram. We're going to prepare our ad copy and our images that are going to be used for our ads. And then an optional step is going to be setting up using a software called Zapier, which basically this just talks to a bunch of different things on the internet and connects it to automate it. So without needing to go into Facebook and pull these leads uh, manually, you can actually set it up to where it sends it over to a spreadsheet automatically. I won't get too much into it right now. And this is an optional step that you don't have to worry about if you don't want to. So let's go into the kind of first stage of the prep, which is preparing your pages for traffic. So we're looking at our primary pages on Facebook and Instagram. These are going to be our business pages. This is what we're going to showcase our work from. This is where we're posting about new pieces that we're uh, that we're finishing up, or maybe a project or services, or maybe this is where we have our website link. But we want to make sure to actually prepare these pages for once we start running our ads, because people are going to see our ad, they're going to click on the link, and they're going to look at the page and see if it's legitimate. Now, I also don't want this to be a deterrent where maybe you don't have a large following, maybe you don't have a lot of stuff yet on your profiles. Don't worry about it. It's okay, because the advertisement is going to be a good pre-frame to where it kind of, I don't want to say negates, but to where if you don't have a large following, it really doesn't affect the performance of your advertisement. But we just want to keep it in mind as we're running these things, people will go and look for credibility. So we just want to make sure that our Instagram profile has a link in our bio, right? A link tree that either goes to our website or something else kind of showing our credibility. We want to make sure that our Instagram has images of our work that's displayed professionally almost similar to like your portfolio. And then on your Facebook page, just being able to make sure that you've got links to either your website, maybe you're linking back over to your Instagram. You just have things there to where you're developing that credibility. Or if you're more built out and you have your website, you've got uh, different channels and things like that, make sure to link them on those pages because people will be visiting those. And so we just want to make sure that those are prepared. The next step in your prepping phase is actually getting your advertising account set up. So if you have familiarity with Facebook or Instagram and you have a business account, you might have actually gone through this process in the past, which is great because you need that to be able to get started on that. But if not, this is going to be the next step is actually setting up these business accounts, your ad manager, and then again, Zapier, which is optional, very simple, but don't, don't let that be a holdback uh, to getting started but we're actually going to have the full videos to this in your student library. So under uh, this client's on-demand workshop, once you go into it, along with this video, there's going to be a video underneath that's going to show how to go up, how to go in and actually set up your business manager account and set up your ads manager. So that way you'll have the step-by-step walkthrough for being able to set that up. And of course, if you've got any questions, making sure to share in the group, emailing support, anything like that. Um, but we just want to make sure to have those accounts so that we can run these ads on Facebook and Instagram. 
The next in the preparation phase is your ad copy and images. So the easiest way for, for me and everybody might be a little bit different here, uh, but is being able to use Google Drive. You can see that I just set up a folder uh, and I called it my lead ads folder. I created a folder in there for the images where I can put the different images that I have. And then I created a document inside of that folder uh, for the ad copy. So one of the great things is we actually created a lot of different, I say a lot of different, we have three different variations of ad copy for furniture finishing services and then three variations of uh, copy for cabinet refinishing services. So whether or not you want to offer one of those uh, in the resource section, along with this training, as far as the step-by-step, -step, we'll have that link. So that way you can visit that. You can just take that template, copy and paste it, and then change it uh, to be able to work for your ad. So that takes a little bit of the guesswork out for you as far as creating the copy. And in terms of the images, you want these to be either before and after or lifestyle images. We've seen different ones work better in different areas. There's really no rhyme or reason uh, other than just testing and seeing which ones works. But you can see this before and after image that we used here for one of the ads. Uh, and even this image just by itself uh, could work for the ad as well. Uh, but I would plan to have one or two variations of these just so you can have differences than one ad uh, that you're running. But being able to save these here and have these prepared before you actually set up your ad is going to help you take out a lot of the guesswork. So you can see here kind of one of the examples of the ad that we ran. Uh, we ran this from the finishing school account to be able to just test a kind of an update uh, to see how they're running here recently. You can see that basically the framework is just service near four locations. So this could be uh, furniture refinishing uh, for Panama City Beach, you know, what have you, being able to put that in, put a story or about kind of your services. So you can see our artisans use high quality paint and techniques to ensure a beautiful, long lasting finish. And then a call to action, which is our click quick quote to get started. So I don't know if you can see it here below this little uh, image, but there is a button that says get quote. When they click on that button, Facebook has it built in with this ad that a form is going to pop up from Facebook requesting their information. So it's going to be a name, email, phone number, and then some additional questions uh, kind of qualifying them as far as what type of service are you wanting to get done? How soon are you wanting to get the service done? And that information will be saved as a lead in Facebook. Or again, if you're using Zapier, will automatically go into a spreadsheet. So you can see that we ran this ad for a little while just to test it out. I believe this was in Portland, Oregon for this one specifically. And we were able to get three leads for about $20 a lead. Now, this price will range based on location. Maybe if you're not in uh, as much of a rural area, if you are more of a rural area. Uh, but of course, it will just depend based on testing. You know, one image might perform better than another image. A certain copy, a set of copy will work better than a different set of copy, uh, or maybe even if you have a different offer. So you can see here, this is just for getting a quote. Not much incentive there other than the service in itself, uh, but that you could create some sort of discount or some sort of special and then run that as the advertisement and, and use that as kind of an incentive to get the quote. So you can experiment with it and test it out. But even just to give you an idea, I mean, three leads at $20 each, depending on the service that you're providing, you're looking at several hundred easily to the thousands to the several thousands, depending on the service that you're offering. So being able to have that where you're consistently getting leads and at that price point, being able to follow up, the return on investment is going to be a lot greater than what you're putting in, especially if you don't have a consistent method right now for being able to get customers uh, locally to be able to offer services for. So that's summing it up as far as our planning phase. And again, we're going to have the PDF saved so you can review the presentation as well as the supporting videos and documentation for the planning phase. So that way you'll be able to have everything you need to get those accounts set up. So jumping into number two, this is the advertising phase. So again, we're not going to get too much into the actual details of the advertising campaign set up tonight. We're going to have a separate video in your student library under this workshop that will show you how to set that up. But I do want to give you a good overview, just so you understand once you're getting into it, uh, once the recordings are uploaded, what it's going to look like and what that process